Okay, so again, we are going to have to zoom through several mm -hmm. chapters. Um, I know y'all are going to have time at home to spend more time underlining and meditating on some of these things, but we just want to continue to sort of touch on some of the things that jumped out at us and hear and your voice in them. 11 through 14. Yes. Today. And so starting in chapter 11, we're talking about just fullness um, mm -hmm. and what it means to be mm -hmm. full. And you mentioned mm -hmm. several different ways, and I even appreciated um, on page 77, just kind of where you're talking about not being defined by all these different roles that we have in yeah. our lives, which I think is so easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a bunch in this one. Um, well, I do. I know I have several things. But you talk about being in the fullness of His forgiveness and the fullness of His spirit and the fullness of His word. Um, I know we have a lot to cover, but you want to just say a word kind mm -hmm. of about that? I think for me, um, more and more I realize that when um, we were called into Christ, mm -hmm. we were called into a fullness mm -hmm. that I want to more and more learn to live in. Mm -hmm. And I th think just to live in my identity mm -hmm. in Christ, who he has made me to be, who he says mm -hmm. I am, what kind of a future I have. I want to uh, live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. asking um, Him to control me more mm -hmm. and more, to produce His fruit in me. Um, I want to live in the fullness of the Word. I want mm -hmm. the Word to dwell in me richly. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. So mm -hmm. um, there is, uh, I like to think about living a beautiful life mm -hmm. in a fallen yes. world. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of beautiful with two L's, beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. life. I love so. that. I love that. And I think that leads really well into chapter 12 where you're talking about countenance and spirit and mm -hmm. glorifying God and blessing mm -hmm. others. I, I just loved this chapter mm -hmm. I um tell us about you have a great story toward the end of the chapter about Carl and Mary <laughs> Jane and about you say neither Carl nor Mary Jane will make the cover of People magazine but to me their faces are truly beautiful mm -hmm. countenances that minister the joy of the Lord so tell yes. us a little bit about them uh, when we lived in Colorado Springs in our church there was a man named Carl he was probably five foot to <laughs> radiant face and he loved my husband and when we'd get to church we'd see Carl coming with a finger in the air <laughs> and this glowing face and he'd say I'm going to see him soon Aww. and I think he died at a hundred and one wow. but when I talked to his daughter I um, had written her for permission mm -hmm to write about her dad. And she said, you know, with dad, uh, when he told about his conversion, it always sounded like it just happened. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I yeah. think um, it's returning to where God started mm -hmm. with me. Right. That is a joy producer mm -hmm. that shows mm -hmm. in our face. And then Mary Jane was born with cerebral palsy. She's even shorter than Carl. I'd say four foot ten, maybe. <laughs> and um, she is, she's funny, she's cute. Her face is, uh, you know, screwed up in a smile. She uh, is in her 80s. <laughs> recently remarried um but there is joy there yeah and i think <coughs> what both their lives said to me was it it illustrated that uh, a joyful countenance mm -hmm. is not dependent on your circumstances yeah, yeah. on your health mm -hmm. on your you know all these things um and that there is a ministry yeah, of countenance. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's um um I went to speak once and even before I started speaking and they paid me to come, I looked at the out at the audience and I thought, 
I'm intimidated. They look mm. so grim. Oh, no. And but I think we just don't think right. about don't how our how face much, yeah, could yeah. minister yes. to somebody else. I, I love I, that. I think that is so true. And you all, we all know that there, mm-hmm. there. That is such. It, it really is a true mm-hmm. thing, and it goes sort of back to what we talked about earlier. Like, what was the phrase that you used? Like, what is the. Um, environment that I'm creating with my life or yeah, what the is spirit, the, the atmosphere the atmosphere was the word mm-hmm. yeah and, I, and I've right. thought about that so much since reading that what is the atmosphere mm-hmm. that I'm bringing because we do know those people who you know maybe they're not angry right. but they look like they are <laughs> right right um and then you you go on and you talk about creativity and discipline and just was you were a happy camper I was a happy chapter. camper I'm not gonna lie um but you say without um, 89, without discipline and creativity, can anyone live a beautiful life in a fallen world? And um, and just how those two go together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um, I think um, that we need both of those. Mm-hmm. We need creativity. And the creativity I'm talking about is not that you play the violin or you paint or you're a photographer, Mm -hmm. but that you engage creatively in your life. Mm -hmm. Like for a mom with little kids, you need to be creative to figure out how you are going to nourish your own life Mm -hmm. spiritually Mm -hmm. because it may not look Mm -hmm. like it's looked before children. Mm -hmm. So um, how do I maintain the um, what's important. I need to be creative in how Mm -hmm. I think, how I use my time, my problem solving. And um, spiritual disciplines, uh, that can sound like something oppressive Mm, if you think that it can only look one way. But it's when you know that you're trying to build your life around what will take you where you really Mm. want to go. And often we'll say, um, as Christians, we've been educated to say, God, you know, you know, these things. Mm -hmm. But when we look at our lives, they're not reflective of those values. Mm. So Mm. That's that's so so good, and then you end this this section that we're talking about today about living a reverent and kind life, mm-hmm. um, and I love that you put again those two words that you don't normally necessarily see together mm-hmm. together. Um, so talk a little bit about imagination, about that and, imagination. <laughs> and, and disciplined yes. imagination. Yes. I, I just love that. Well, I think. Um, We often think of imagination as taking something that doesn't exist out of the ether and making Mm -hmm. it, or um, something fictitious. Or something childlike. Yeah. mm -hmm. But I think the, the real thing of imagination is how do I engage more fully with what is real and true and invisible and eternal Mm -hmm. and of real value. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the scriptures, unless we engage the imagination, it's just black marks Mm -hmm. on a page. Mm -hmm. Um, When we pray um, to a God who is eternal, invisible, holy, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. all these things, unless we can engage, fully engage, and that takes imagination, yeah. we really don't enter into relationship. Mm. And uh, John Ruskin said that without imagination, a person can be neither kind nor reverent. Mm. So in order to engage with the Lord, we need imagination. Yeah. And if we're going to be kind, we need to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of someone else, which takes yeah. imagination. imagination. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I don't think it's a word that people would put right. in that context mm-hmm. at all, but it's such a beautiful way of thinking it about really it. It really is. It really is. Thank you, Jean. You're amazing. <laughs> See you guys soon.